What's going on guys, Crafty Rick here, and what I have for you today, it's this amazing Pokemon Game Boy Diorama, based on one of Jamie Brownhill's drawings. I saw his post on Instagram one day, and it instantly sent me down memory lane. It had one of my favorite Pokemon, which is Whooper, and it was the same color as the one I had when I was a kid. I highly recommend his YouTube channel and Instagram page, I'll leave a link on the description. He makes amazing isometric illustrations and pixel art drawings. And we're doing a giveaway! I'm giving away this model, and he's giving away one of his prints directly from the store. It's the same this model is based on, so stay tuned to find out how to participate. Alright, so we're beginning with the 3D model for both the Game Boy and the cartridge. I ran it through the slicer, and then I added supports to it as well. It came out good for the most part, but it had some major flaws. The print split in some places, and then the supports fused to it in some others. It took about 8 hours to print, so I wasn't gonna discard it, I decided to fix it instead. So I started wet sanding the whole thing. And once dried, I filled up the gaps with epoxy putty. The cartridge came out perfectly, but I had to cut off a part of it to make it fit into the Game Boy. Using a Dremel, I cut off the square part where the pond's gonna be. The Pokemon are also 3D printed. I ran them through the slicer, resized them, and printed away. The prints came out perfectly, but every time I tried to take them off the supports, the gills snapped in some places. So in order to fix them, I drilled a hole on the side of their head, and cut off a part of a plastic plant to simulate the gills, which then I super glued in place. And now we have both male and female. The same thing happened with the hobbit. So I discarded the wings. The Pichu came out nicely though. I primed my Game Boy and cartridge and did some color testing. I also made some paper wings for the Hopip. Once I primed all of my Pokemon, I super glued them to a paint bottle to use that as a handle. I kept the supports on the Hopip, so I painted some base colors on it. I base coated the Whoopers, and now I'm gonna paint the Pichu as well. You can find a more detailed time lapse of my whole painting process. It's on my Instagram, at CraftyRick.
I just made the wings out of uh, cardboard and then I super glued them on. I had too much caffeine when I was painting these, so I used a mechanical pencil to draw the outlines of the eyes and mouth. And once my hands stopped shaking, I began painting over the outlines. And this is going to be Pokemon Gold. What a classic. The Game Boy Color was released in many different colors. Mine was teal. Which color was yours? Leave your answer in the comments below. Okay, so all of the big parts are painted, dried, and ready to go. Using masking tape, I painted some of the rich lines on the sides. And now I'm adding some highlights. Now for the plants, I used a thick piece of paper and cut it into shape. And then I gave it a base green color. Now for the stalk of the cattail, I used some floral wire.
and then I use some tack to make the top part of it. These are packed with seeds. I added some glue and then I shaped my leaves. A quick dry brush for details, followed by edge highlights. Now time to prime and paint the cattails. Now I'm using epoxy putty to cover up some of the gaps that might lead to bubbles when I'm doing the resin pour. And now I'm applying watered down PVA glue along with sand to simulate the ground texture. Once it's dry, take off the tape and look at that texture. Prime it, paint it, add your washes, and then dry brush it. Now we're using some more watered down PVA glue for the grass. Sprinkle that on, let it dry out, and remove the excess. And now super glue for the leaf blades. I'm also adding an additional layer of grass for variety. Now I'm going through my baggie of roots to add details to the pond. And then my hand selected pebbles.
glue everything in place and then add some more sand for the extra detail. I'm adding an extra layer of matte varnish to the Pokemon to prevent any unwanted reactions from the resin and the paint. Put down a layer of glue and let it dry out to prevent any bubbling when you're doing your resin pour. Okay, so the entry requirements are simple. All you have to do is follow both Instagram accounts, leave a like, and tag a friend in the comments section. And we'll be announcing the winner two weeks after May 1st. We will be doing that through Instagram, so stay tuned. Make sure everything is level when you're doing a resin pour as well. So I prepared my resin and added a little bit of ink with a toothpick. I prepared my area and started pouring. Pour your resin slowly and only add a little bit at a time. Because I messed up big time here. You can see I over poured, but luckily my grass absorbed most of it. I had to let it solidify before I began to remove it. Then I used some carving tools to begin that process. Once clean I had to reapply the grass again.
Okay, now that the Pokemon are super glued in place, I'm gonna give them a coat of matte varnish. And now I'm gonna add some water ripples to my pond. and some static grass for even more detail. I printed the cartridge sticker on a piece of paper and then I glued that on. You can see a big crack right there on the Game Boy it happened when I tried to squeeze in the cartridge. But no big deal, I'm gonna cover it up with two labels. Now I'm cutting the entire Game Boy with matte varnish. This is to protect it from Cheeto fingers. And that's it everyone, it was absolutely fun to work on this model, as well as partnering with Jamie. That's at Jamie Brownhill on Instagram or YouTube, he's got great content and it's so nicely presented. And it is always so satisfying to watch his time-lapse videos on YouTube, that you should go check it out yourself. So don't forget to participate, it's entirely free. So thank you for watching, please comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more builds. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye.